So yeah. Yes. So today we have to start from this. So, okay, just give me one minute. We'll just start. Okay, guys. So let's just start. So today we are doing. Uh, there are different types of methods for sampling. Okay, first is random sampling. Second is purposive. Third is stereified, systematic, quota sampling, and convenient sampling. Okay. So first of all, what you will do, you will write method of sampling and you will draw like this. Okay. So it's not possible for you to draw like this, like same as it is. But how you will do? Uh, you will draw. I'll just give you one trick. Okay. Wait. Okay, so how you will draw? You will write methods of sampling, and over here, and uh, you will make it like this. First one you will write here, and second one you will write it here. Okay, and again, third one you will write it here. Fourth one you will write it here, like this. So you will have the space. Okay, then fifth one, then sixth one, like this. Clear? Yeah. Clear. Okay, so quickly write it down. Then we'll start one by one all the sampling.
done girls yes no finish no yes okay okay so now let's just start by one uh, start one by one okay ma'am what is first of all random sampling so random sampling is for example this is the area from here uh, these are the people okay what i came here and i randomly chose two people so that is random sampling so what is random sampling random sampling is that method of sampling in which each and every item of universe has equal chances of being selected in the sample so here everyone has equal chances it's not like that i'll select him or her no everyone has equal chances but i will randomly select any two people okay some random sampling may be done in the following ways so how you can do it first method is lottery method okay so lottery method what is this basically what happens this is a place this is a box over here we will make slip okay in this method paper slips are made up of each items of universe these slips are suffered these slips are suffered in a box then impartially some of the slips are drawn out to form the sample so over here what i will do these are the people okay so i will make i have these people i will make the slip of them and randomly i will choose two slips the name like the name uh, slip are made up of the name i'll call it out and they are the samples okay so this is lottery method now sample is uh, next is table of random numbers so table is basically for example i just these are the people okay for example these are the what's wrong hmm. so these are the people okay and randomly i just gave them name 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay what's wrong yeah so i just gave them name that okay mm -mm. i don't understand what is happening with my writing pen nowadays okay let me just finish this so i just gave them name okay you are uh, four you are five like this and i said that i will be taking the people according to two tables so it is like two and four these two people i'll be selecting that you are the sample but for example i said i'll be uh, conducting three table so then i'll take this and maybe some other person six number like this okay so table of random numbers some situation uh, some statisticians have prepared a set of tables called table of random number a sample is framed with reference to this table okay so they what they will do they have just made a table and accordingly they will make it so that is known as ten tables of random number clear now the question is ma'am what are the merits of random sampling okay so merits of random sampling i am writing here rs that is fair, okay so first of all you will write free from personal biasness okay then second you will write each and every item of universe stands equal chances of being selected okay then the here the universe get fairly represented clear and then this is very simple uh, you will write very simple and straight forward method clear so you don't have to write entire thing the one i have marked you have to write this only okay getting the point yeah okay then coming to demerits first of all this method does not guarantee proportional representation of different item like for example over here i am choosing the literacy rate okay and these are the people i just took these two people as a sample but these two people were illiterate but other people other eight people were literate right so i randomly what will happen i will be making the data according to illiterate people not with the help of literate people right so over here if this with this method you don't get a guarantee that everyone will be represented okay and then random sampling does not give weightage to certain items important item of mm -hmm. so you will write it okay instead of writing it you can write this method does not give or just write random sampling does not give so over here everyone is not getting weightage right over here i chose literacy rate so literacy rate include illiterate as well as literate right but over here i choose the two people these two people were only literate so li literate people are not getting any weightage right so because of this method everyone do not do not get this equal weightage clear yeah okay so what you will do you will be very very quick okay just write random sample first the definition till here okay and after that random sampling may be done in the following ways first lottery system you have to write entire thing then table of random sampling till here then merits of this the underlined part okay 
free from personal biasness. Okay, then second, each and every item of the universe stands equal chances. And third, till here, fourth. And uh, demerits you will write. Then you will write first point and the second point. Clear? Be very very quick. Okay, you can write it down. First, write this the definition. Then I'll scroll it down.
Okay, everyone is done. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm just giving you one more minute, then we'll start with the next topic. Okay, so I hope everyone is done now. Let's just start. See, sometimes what uh, students think, they think random sampling is basically the haphazard sampling. Haphazard sampling is basically, I am in hurry, right? And randomly, I just randomly choose two people, right? But no, random sampling is not haphazard sampling. Sometimes you will get a question like this, is random sampling is a haphazard? Haphazard sampling or not. So you, at that moment, you will be like, no, it's not like there's a difference. See, random sampling is accordance with the rules and rules of sampling. You are following the rules of sampling. But here, you are, hepatitis sampling is not accordance with the rule of sampling. Clear? Then here, random sampling allows every item of an equal chance of being selected in the sample. But uh, haphazard sampling does not allow every item and equal chance of being selected in the sample. So this is a difference. So sometimes what the students say, see, when you are in hurry, you will randomly make any choice, right? That is also a random sampling, but there's a difference between random sampling and the haphazard sampling. So this is a difference. So you will write hashtag random sampling is not a ha uh, haphazard sampling. Uh, but then you will write the difference between both are this two. Clear? Yes, no. Yes, ma'am. Yes, teacher. Remember, you will get a question like this. Is random sampling a haphazard sampling? Ha or uh, haphazard sampling and random sampling are the same thing? So most of the students will write yes, but the answer is no. So you will write no, random sampling is not a haphazard sampling because there's a difference between both the two and the difference lies below. Like this, you will answer. Ma'am, should we write both the points? Yes, you have to write both the points. Okay, ma'am.
done girls Okay, students so done. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, next second one is purposive or the deliberate sampling. So, purposive is basically if I am making a, I am doing a sampling with any purpose or by knowingly, deliberately. That is known as purposive. So, this purposive sampling is that method in which investigator himself make a choice of the sample. So, for example, these are the students, right? Over here, I am not randomly choosing it. I am according to for example i want dancers okay so of course i will choose those students who are good in dance right so i will purposely choose two these two people right for example this is your class okay these two people dance very well so of course i will choose these two but for example i am just uh, finding the boxers so these two people are good in boxing so i will choose these two students as a sample right so this is purpose okay so over here investigator make choice according to his own opinion right the whom he think the best suitable samples can be big. Then what are the merits of this? First of all, this merit is flexible to allow the inclusion of those items in the samples which are of specific significance. Okay. So this method, for example, I want dancers. So I will be choosing only dancers. Right. So over here, I can include my people whom I think they are good in dance. So for example, these two people are good, but I can say that one more student is very good in this. So what I will do, I will choose him also as a sample. Then selection of item can be deliberately turned to the purpose of the study. So I, if I'm selecting any item, then I can change it according to the need. Okay. For example, in dance also, you may have different types of dance, Western dance, you know, classical dance and all that. Right. So for example, I wanted the student for Western dance. Okay. But now suddenly someone said that uh, these two people were from classical dance. So I can teach them Western dance. Right. I can because they dance very well. So, for example, this is a non-dancer and this is a dancer, but this dancer knows classical. So, I can teach him Western. It is easy instead of teaching the student dance, right? So, the selection of items can be deliberately turned to the purpose. So, according to the purpose, I can change my samples. Then it is very simple technique, okay? So, you will write a uh, simple technique. Third point, here, selection of, first, second, you have to write the entire. 
and then what are the DRM? There is a possibility of personal biases, right? For example, I am choosing intelligent students, right? And over here, these are the students, and these two people are my favorite. And but these students are average, but I make them made them the sample. So here you can see personal biases. So you will write here possibility of personal biases. Personal biases you will write. Okay. Then second, uh, because of the possibility of personal bias, reliability of the results become doubtful. Okay. So you will be like uh, reliability of the data results can be doubtful. Can or instead of writing this, you can write non-reliable data. Okay. Clear. Clear, girls. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so quickly write it down because after this we have to cover one more.
serem banget. Okay, so let's just start. I hope everyone is done. Let's just start with the next, which is your sterified or the mixed sampling. So, ma'am, what is this? See, according to this method of sampling, population is divided into different strata having different characteristics, and the sum of the items are selected from each strata so that the entire population gets represented. Okay, so basically, what is happening over here? See, for example, this is a area, right? Over here, M is basically male. Okay. And F is basically female and C is basically the children. Okay. So for example, if I will do random something that maybe I can choose two females, but I'm unable, I will not be able to study about others. So what I will do, I will make three groups over here. Okay. In first group, I will only keep males. In second group, I will keep female. And in third group, I will keep children. So I will randomly choose any two male and then I'll study. Then, uh, then I will choose any female. I will study then like this. So this is basically sterified or the mixed sampling. So over here, you make different groups and accordingly you study about them. Clear? Yes. yes. Okay. So now next is ma'am. Uh, what are the marriage? Basically, see, this method covers the diverse characteristics of the population. So you will write, covers diverse characteristics of the population. Second, on the basis of diverse, uh, a comparison, you will write a comparative analysis of the data becomes possible. Okay. So comparative means now you can compare male, females, and children, right? So compare, uh, because of this, comparative analysis of data becomes possible. Okay, so you will write because of this method, because of BTM. BTM means because of this method. Okay, then here, uh, this methods offer reliable as well as meaningful method. So you will write this method offers reliable as well as meaningful result. Okay, now coming to demerits. First of all, not suitable only when there is a complete knowledge. This method is suitable only when there is a complete knowledge about the diverse characteristics of the population. Okay, so for example, over here, you don't know whether males, females or children are leaving or male, female, old age people, whatever it is, right? So if you don't have the, uh, you know, knowledge about the diverse characteristics of a particular area, you cannot make any conclusion. So you cannot use it. Second, there is a possibility of biasness at the time of classification of the population into different strata. So there can be a biasness. Maybe I, instead of, I ignored the children part and I just made only, uh, uh, male and female so personal biases so you can write first possibility of vice at the time of classification okay then when the size of the population is already small it may be difficult to divide it further into smaller strata right for example over here only three people are there so how will you make group of three people one one you cannot make a group right so when population is small you cannot further you know break them into smaller parts so these are the basically demands here so we will be quickly because we have only seven, six minutes. So in six minutes, you have to write it down quickly.
मैम कर यू स्क्रोल अप फॉर अ मिनट
Denmark. Okay.